about 8 o'clock and Jake and I had intentions of getting back to this spot this morning and setting up. This is a spot that Brody and I had a bunch of action in a couple of weeks ago. I think it was Halloween. Saw a shooter buck right in front of me here, but we were about 300 yards away. And Jake and I came in with a little bit of light with intentions of just hunting our way in. Right off the bat, we got back in here. We saw a ton of deer crossing right in this little valley here. There's a bunch of action going on, so we were getting pretty excited. And about five minutes ago, we just saw a guy walk right through, right where all the deer were going. We're over a mile back in here, but there's private land where I know there's a hunt camp or something up in there. I'm just assuming that's where that guy came from. But that's part of hunting public land. The nice thing is, is we didn't come back here and hang a whole set. Because if we did, we'd probably be pretty disappointed. But luckily for us, we can just bounce to plan B. It's a really frosty morning and it's pretty calm. When that sun gets up, burns off this fog and this frost. It's going to make this stuff really wet. Even though the conditions are maybe a touch less than ideal for moving around. I always say that I like to pick one thing that you can use to your advantage. Just pick one condition that you have and take advantage of it today. It's going to be that we're going to be able to creep around and not hardly make any noise once this dew starts to melt. So we're going to move on and try to use this uh, wet vegetation to our advantage. We're just going to have fun and try to take advantage of a less than ideal situation here this morning. Well, after this morning, Jake and I have been bouncing around, checking out a few few areas for pressure, uh, just looking at crop fields and stuff like that, just trying to get a little information. This evening, we're back at a place close to where we hunted last night. We hunted on the other side of the river, deep in there, and on the way in, we noticed that this field is standing corn. And a lot of times on some of these pieces of public, there's pretty decent food plots in this spot specifically the crop fields go way back in there. But we're gonna ease back and hit this first field and the fields go on for a good mile back in there. So I know where there's multiple bedding areas back behind that corn and we're just gonna ease our way back and either set up or just keep moving slowly back until we find the sign that we want. I'm excited about it. Wet conditions, a little bit of a breeze and we've been seeing bucks moving pretty much throughout the day. So hopefully our luck will change. We've had a little rough go of it today, but we're staying positive and gonna head back in here, see what we see. Jake and I eased our way along the crop field that was standing corn. And as we got further back in here, we got to some of the other fields that are kind of separated off. And the first one we got to was really close to this major bedding area of cattails, and it was cut corn. As soon as we hit that cut corn field, there was tons of deer sign, tons of tracks. The good news is, is these deer are bedding really close to these crop fields. And it's basically the furthest away you can get from the road on the whole river unit. Every time I've scouted here, just time and time again, the bedding sign tells me that these deer are not that far from the crops. But what we did instead of setting up right on the crop field, so we came into the edge of the bedding area. Our wind is blowing right into a mass of cattails where these deer bed is underneath these willows that are in the middle of the cattails. Right where we're at is a strip. It's a transition line of cattails and where this canary grass kind of goes up through the middle of it. And this strip of canary grass goes right into those cornfields. I suspect the deer just kind of, kind of use that as a highway and all the sign is telling us that. All these does are working in this direction, going to that crop field. 
And if any buck's trying to cut their trails, he's likely going to come right along this edge right in front of us. It's close quarters in here. There's not a lot of room to see, but we wanted to get closer to these beds, so we're in the middle of it. We got about an hour and a half left of daylight. I think there's a decent chance we could see some good activity coming through here, and hopefully we can get a buck to come right down the pipe. Be pretty sweet. Probably give us about a 20, 25 yard shot at the most. It sounded good. I think it might be a touch back, but he's quartering. <laughs> you got that? Yes. Could you believe that? Dude? I literally just said I can't believe there's not air moving in here. I'm shaking like a leaf. Dude. He's really nice. He's really nice. I don't even care, man. I'm standing on this log like this, and I'm glassing into this bedding area. Something cracked my right, just like we thought these deer were going to be crossing these doves' trails. I mean, we talked about it exactly. I looked to my right, and I just saw tides coming right at us, and I made a big mistake, and I moved almost instantly because I just saw a huge rack. I knew I had to get down. We made a big move. I dropped down. I told Jake he might have saw me. I think he did because he came in, and he was looking. And they must have just given up on us because we're wearing these ghillie suits. And I'll tell you what, guys, these deer did not see up. <laughs> Man, I think, I mean, I think it's good. I don't really want to do much yet. I, think I mean, we, we can walk out there and then we should just leave and get everybody. I Go watch know. it. Decent blood right off the bat. But I didn't want to go too far. I'm gonna give him give him some time here and we'll be back tonight for sure. Or so we're just gonna sleep slip out of here. I'm being super super quiet. First time I initially saw him, that like he just comes like walking through the opening, he just like looks like straight at us for like two seconds. And then like didn't then see anything. Like, didn't Once care. he realized we, that we you didn't were, move and right. like, he didn't care. He looked at it, he saw you and they, he realized it wasn't he, dangerous. So. Well, I think, I don't think he, act, yeah, I think he saw movement, but then yeah. he didn't, couldn't see us because Jake's behind me crouched and I had this like wall of grass, so I'm just sitting mm -hmm. like this. And we had a big trunk, a mm -hmm. wide mm -hmm. trunk behind us and a trunk that went that way that yeah, I was standing on. Yeah, break you up. He yeah. couldn't have seen you in there. Couldn't see us. Yeah. Yeah. Quartering away from you. Yeah, I mean, he's still quartering away from you there. Slightly. But Doc's to my right, so it's even more. Sounds like he, a diaphragm turns this hit. Way. Yeah. Sounds like back of the ribs. Yeah. That's solid. 
that's not going through and just clipping liver like that's diaphragm yeah and he tears out yeah. of there like a bat out of heck you know and the, the arrows covered in blood with bubbles that blood. I want to, yeah, I mean, it's, like, that's, that's what we all it's, thought, like, when I shot, yeah. I was like, it sounds good, the first, thing he, I said. first thing he says <laughs> is it's about good. what the one I shot last year sounded mm -hmm. like. Yep. I found blood, I tracked blood through the grass right to the arrow, and, like, there was hair, and there was blood splattered through, and that's, I just stuck my hand through that blood and pulled the arrow right out, and the grass is this tall. It's gonna be a short blood trail, <laughs> is what I'm thinking. I think he's double lunged. <laughs> I do. I hope so, All we yeah. gotta do is, <laughs> we gotta do is get a deer cart. Yeah. Let's help, Cause man. I don't want to drag him through those fields out there. <laughs> it's a long way uh, back I, Yeah, I don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll get, we'll get him. Well, it's about nine o'clock and Jake, myself, and the rest of the crew is out here. We've got Greg, Brody, Aaron, and Mindy. So we're headed back there. We watched the footage back when we got back to Greg's house and it looks good. Uh, it sounds good. It's, it's the first thing everybody said. That was the first thing I said after the shot and Greg and Aaron, everybody agreed that it sounded really good. Yep. So looked at the arrow, found it out there before we came back. Arrow looks good, sounds good, so we're hoping that he didn't go very far. Uh, I thought I thought there was right at the back of the rib cage, quartering away shot, which is right where you want to be. So sounded good. Arrow looks good. We're feeling confident, so we're gonna head back there and pick up on that first blood that we found. Just really take our time. We got good conditions. Uh, it's still damp. Uh, that frost melted off this morning just made the ground really wet and that's why we were able to sneak around on oh, the ground. Was able to sneak in on <laughs> yeah <laughs> so we're gonna ease back there taking our time but we're pretty confident at this point that we got a good shot on him I followed that blood straight to the arrow I just stuck my hand right in there Do it left or right went straight that way I found blood up to there somewhere. That looks good. It's real good right here. Yeah, dude, look at all of them. Yep. There's some all the way over there. Yeah, if you jump to the I see it's spray on that graph. It's on both sides, finally. Dude, look at all this blood. Yeah. I'm a lot better now. Look at all that blood. Second. What's that up ahead? Perfect, man. Perfect. Yes. Oh man, I was so nervous about it at first. Dude, no, you just Why smoked him. That's the exit right there. You said he was cornering well, the way. going to be in the same spot. We haven't gone. Holy cow. Oh, man. You know, it was like... Really. <laughs> or really, you always just second guess yourself. And I knew from my angle, it looked like it was right there. It sounded good. It was good. Look, yeah. dude. <laughs> I mean, it came out right at the shoulder. <sighs> No, that's yeah, where dude. I put it in there. Yeah, and that's right where I want. I mean, that's Went, it was. He was quartering just, away. Yep, quartering away. Man, went right through the middle of the diaphragm, cleaned him out. <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. <laughs> yeah. Holy cow, man! <laughs> Shoot, that's awesome. Look at that thing. 
He actually, here's, this is interesting. But you can see his legs are folded up. Uh -huh. He actually laid down and died right there. Yeah, see, that's what I like said. He didn't, he didn't crash. That's yeah. probably why you didn't hear him go down. Did yeah. you hear that? Because look at his back legs. They were all folded up underneath him. Mm -hmm. I think that grunt that we heard was him. him? Yeah. Like coughing or gurgling mm -hmm. or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I bet so. His forehead's really cool. I can get the color. You see the inside of his leg there, Greg? The white on it. Oh, yeah. Well, he's got all kinds of character though. Yeah, he does. Yeah, this is the first thing I noticed here. This yeah. kind of came off the inside. Or... Yeah. Man, I was hoping that I wasn't bringing that home and bringing these gloves. Nailed him, dude. Nailed Not him. Not when you hit him like that. <laughs> yeah. And 13? Yep. Mm hmm. Well, our guess was right and the shot was good. It went in right where I thought it did and then it came out right on the offside shoulder and he went less than 100 yards. You're always a little bit unsure though when you don't see him go down and I'm always just a little bit more nervous than I probably should be, but. You could hear it in the video yeah. though, man. I mean, you could hear that pop. Yep. That drum pop that you get when you hit in the diaphragm. Yep. Like and then when he took off, he just kind of loaded and. Right, yeah, he lunged forward. Shoulders. Well, you can tell from your reaction, too, that the shot felt good mm -hmm. also. Definitely. You know, I mean, and when all those things align and happen, even though it's hard to see the aerial impact in mm -hmm. the video, I mean, hit him perfect, though, man, mm -hmm. right at the back of the ribs and went right up through. Today was a situation where we felt like the best place to be was on the ground. I've been hunting a lot on the ground, trying to get this opportunity that we got this afternoon, and it's been pretty situational. There's some spots where the only real option is to get into a tree stand, but some of these places where these deer are bedding are down in low areas and creek bottoms, or in this instance, a cattail marsh. You have to go where they are. Right. I mean, if you're, and if you're up in a tree up along the edge, you're watching this deer 200 yards. Yeah. Yep. And that was, that was just always our strategy going in when we were hunting on the ground was get into a place where we can get as close to these deer in their beds or where they're bedding as possible. And a lot of times we were getting right in the bedding areas mm -hmm. and deer were coming past us. I think the ghillie suits and yeah. all set up had a lot mm -hmm. to do with that tonight too. Like that willow that you guys are set up against back there, mm -hmm. it's got like, it's a huge willow. It's got all these horizontal branches coming off. It's almost like a brush pile. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then there's all of this marsh grass built in around it. Yeah, I every can't... setup we had this year had this reconary grass just pretty much grown over. Yeah, like and with that ghillie suit in there, mm -hmm. I mean, he takes one look at you and you just, you know, you're just an out of place bush. He looked right through us. Yep. Right. Without the ghillie suit, though, it may be easier for him to pick out your yeah, outline. Yeah, for sure. So I think anything that can just break up that human shape, you know, the shoulders and the head, I think is really the key there. And those ghillie suits, if you look at us from the side just or like behind, a big ball of grass, just, really. Yeah. Right. Just goes to show anything that's going to break up that outline, anything that's different than the you know standard habitat in that area, mm -hmm. is where you want to be. Don't be afraid to think outside of the box when you're hunting mature bucks. If you do the same things that everybody else is doing, uh, those deer are going to avoid those areas, and the big mature bucks just you know, it's not going to see him or you're not going to get any shots at him. And what was interesting too about this buck is he was doing the same thing that a number of other bucks that we've encountered in the past and encountered this year have been doing. They're crossing doe trails. The way we were set up is we we're facing straight to the south and in front of us there was a bunch of doe trails or deer trails in general going east and west. They were going from point A to point B. Well, they're going from bed, bed to, food to food in this instance. Exactly. And this buck was traveling across those. And then once he got to the end of where those doe trails, deer trails were going, he just cut right back into that bedding area. He never went towards the open areas out there at all. He just, he's going from every trail and he's got his nose down. He's trying to smell if does have went in and out of there mm -hmm. lately that might be an estrus, you know. And a lot of times it's not going to be that obvious trail. It's going to be a lot more subtle than like those the one that he's trails. using yeah. yeah yeah because it may just be one buck that uses oh, that sure. throughout the fall every couple of weeks or mm -hmm. whatever the trail that you know. he came in on looked a lot different than the trails that were going right in front <laughs> yeah. of us but you will notice where they meet a lot of times would be a rub there mm -hmm. or, or a scrape stray. or something right where that where it's perpendicular trail i guess mm -hmm. and that's kind of how that that theory just building off of what you just said that 
the theory and how I kind of started strategizing around those locations was looking at scrape lines. A lot of times those scrape lines are doing the, almost the exact opposite of what the majority of the deer trails are doing. Mm -hmm. They're cutting right across them. But another thing that, you know, we always talk about is this time of the year is when those big mature bucks really start getting up and traveling. It just seems like the big dominant mature bucks in that area, and we're in a high deer density mm -hmm. area, it seems like they tend the does that are in their core yep. for the first half of the rut. Yep. They don't even have to get up and move. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, until you know? today, we had seen very few big bucks really, like, moving. We saw several bucks cruising several in places they today. shouldn't be today, yeah. wide open fields, you know. Yeah, and big bucks Making cruising, big bucks. not two- and three-year-old yeah. bucks. You know, not to say a two and three year old buck isn't a big buck, it is in some areas, but yes. here, you know, a lot of the four or five year old and older bucks have just been under the ground basically yeah. here the last few weeks, yep. even during the first part of the rut because they don't have to travel to find those does. But things are really starting to kick in now and all the hunters are leaving. Yeah, but we got a long way out on this one. Luckily, we got that old trusty deer cart with us. And oh, yeah, we got we're... a roadster back there ready to, <laughs> yes. ready to haul, bud. <laughs> but. <laughs> I'm really happy with this deer, and I'm happy that I uh, got to share the experience with these guys, and I'm glad that these guys stuck it out with me and kept hunting on the ground. It was a lot of fun, and man, I'm excited to get out and keep hunting with these guys, and hopefully, now that we got one down on public, we can just keep that ball rolling. <laughs> yeah, it feels good, man. <laughs> finally, finally. It's been a long year. <laughs> Let's keep going. After all those get encounters. him on the cart, man. It's good. We're not going to get out of here until 6 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not old. Just turned 23 yesterday. 